Well, hello and welcome to Jamie TV, streaming 100% live on YouTube. I think everything's okay. Now, you may recall if you are someone who, let me just turn down this a bit more. Okay, if you uh, follow me regularly, you may be aware that uh, a couple of months ago, I was trying to do some live streams and I had all kinds of problems. It just wouldn't work, it wouldn't connect, or it would connect and then immediately fail. Now, I've done some test streams um, over the last few days because I really, really wanted to be able to stream regularly for Song Temba. More about that in a bit. Um, and uh, all the test streams have gone really, really well. And I've no idea why, because I've not fixed anything. I've not changed a single thing. It just seems to be working now. It says excellent connection. So if you could please let me know in the chat, uh, does it sound okay? Um, can you hear me all right? Do, do the, does the visuals look okay? Um, just give me a little bit of reassurance because it's a little bit, it's a little bit nerve wracking considering how poorly it failed before. So if you could let me know, I would really, really appreciate that. We'll just adjust this mic a little bit. There we go. Okay. Right then. So we need to talk about Song Temba. I'm going to turn the music down altogether now. Right. Song Temba. I need to say this just for anybody who's not aware of what Song Temba is. It may be that all of you in the chat right now know what it's all about. Um, and by the way, I must say, thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, because I haven't been streaming regularly, and because my channel hasn't been doing so well recently, um, it's just nice to have, you know, just someone in the chat. I was kind of thinking that maybe I might actually be streaming to myself. So thank you so much for joining me. Now, Song Temba, uh, just in case anyone is watching who doesn't know what it's all about, um, Song Temba was started a few years ago by Mr. Pete Johns, the marvellous, brilliant, wonderful Mr. Pete Johns, uh, who, if you don't follow Pete Johns, in fact, let's do this. Let's show you this right away. Um, if I go to, on my web browser, if I just press this over here, and then I will go to, um, here. Right, okay, so this is the website for Studio Live Today. This is Pete Johns' website, um, which is all about his YouTube channel. And I'm going to press this one just to see if this works. Oh, yeah, that works too. Okay, um, so if you don't follow Pete on YouTube, you really should be doing. So check out this website, check out his YouTube. He's a fantastic creator to follow. An incredibly helpful and lovely guy. Uh, so Pete John started Songtember a few years ago. The idea being, it's not a competition, there's no prizes to be won. You're in competition only with yourself. It's just a challenge that in September, you try and make a track from start to finish. Because we're all really good at starting projects, right? You know, with today's software, you said sounding like a really old geezer. Well, I am a really old geezer. Um, it's very easy to start a project and get something going that sounds great. But it's not so easy to complete something and finish it and release it. When we talk about releasing for Songtember, you don't have to actually put it out to some uh, distribution site. You don't have to put it on Spotify. The devil. You just... Um, if you wish, all, all you have to do is just share it. Maybe do a screen recording of it. Put it in one of the Facebook groups for creators. The um, the group that I really recommend is Pete's group, which is called Create, Record, Release. And you'll find that on Facebook. Right, so the challenge is, is get a song started, complete it, and then let people listen to it. And the fabulous thing about this is Pete's created an amazing community where lots of people get involved. Lots of people will be uh, live streaming, recording their stuff. And in those live streams, you'll find other creators who are working on songs for, some t for Song Timber, if I can say it correctly. And um, it's a great sort of supportive resource where everybody helps everybody out. It's quite a fantastic thing to be part of. Now, let me just 
check my chat. I just need to, um, I'll go back to this screen here and go to this so I can see my chat. Uh, all sounds good and looks fine. Thank you very much. Welcome, Mars. And is it DJ Cthulhu? Am I saying that right? And Gerald, thanks for being here. Um, sounds fine, but video is a bit jerky. Well, I don't really know why that is. What's jerky? Is it some of the cameras? Because I've had problems with a couple of the um, bits of software that I use for the webcams. The webcams are actually all old iPhones, which I'm using. In fact, I've got a new screen that I've never had before. Um, what, what, I'll press this one. That's right. An overhead cam. It's not the best quality. I need to do something about that, but it's a new screen, and I just thought I'd show it you. And look, when I'm doing stuff, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. All right, let's go back over here. Right, so, um, yeah, I don't know what the, jer what the jerky cam is about, but if you can tell me which particular element it is that's, that's jerky, um, I'll see what I can do about it for next stream. I'll not be able to do anything about it for this one, I wouldn't have thought. Right, if I'm, I'm just going to try and remember to use my mouse. Because when I use my mouse, you can see what I'm doing much better. And now I'll just turn this volume back up over here, ready for when we need it. Okay, so, um, as you'll see, I've got Cubasis 3 on my iPad, and I've got a little project in it. Now, September's supposed to be about starting recording and releasing a project within the month. And I have to confess, I did begin this about a week ago. Um, but I, it's just, I like it. And I don't want to have yet another little bit of a finished project on my iPad that doesn't go anywhere. So I want to work on this one. And there are no real rules to Songtember. So I don't think it really matters. My screen looks like it's just lagging a bit. Okay. Maybe it's the internet. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll, you know, sort itself out. It might be that everyone in the house is, you know, streaming on their uh, devices, watching Netflix and stuff. Uh, maybe it'll calm down a bit. So, let's see now. Where was I? Yes. So, I've already started this project. The reason I started this project was because one of my favorite drum apps the drum app that I've used more than any other recently, uh, Drum80, which I also have on my desktop, um, which is an emulation of a Simmons kit. I did a video about it a few months ago, and I said in that video that it would be awesome if it could be multibus out. And GSI have updated it now to multibus out, so I did a little one of those just one-minute YouTube videos just to update everyone, just to let everyone know that Drum80 is now multibus out. And he's awesome. And um, and so I made this piece of music to show off the drums in that video. And, um, and yeah, I dig it. So I'm going to continue working on this. But I'm not going to be working in Cubasis 3. What I want to do with this is, because I, I, I feel that I might need a tempo change in this, and I cannot do that in Cubasis. So I'm going to move this project uh, from Cubasis 3 to Logic Pro for iPad. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about that. So, let's just go to this screen here. Okay, so as you will see, I have in my project, I've got, uh, where's my mouse? There we go. Right, so I've got King of FM. I've got BA1 and Tal. So I've got three synths. I've got noises which just at the beginning of the track here, in fact, let me just pinch and zoom and solo noises. Just for the beginning of the track, noises is just creating this background sound. And it cuts out right there. And I've set that up with some automation, which you'll see here. Uh, you'll see um, noises is off here. It switches on there and off here at this bar. So when I move this project over to Logic Pro for iPad, I had to set that up again. But it wasn't difficult. Um, so all of these tracks are MIDI. 
I've got Drum 80 down here. And as you will see, I'm using the multibus out version of Drum 80. So I've got a separate track for every drum. Which is really awesome. And then if I go to my mixer, you'll see that means I'm able. Let's just shoot over here. Makes it nice and easy to mix. And it means that for each and every component part of the kit, I can use different effects. And so on and so on. Now, of course, it is possible. What am I pressing? Sorry about that. Um, of course, if you've got the kind of drum app that doesn't have multiple sound, it is possible ultimately to um, to freeze each one or render each one and actually get your drums onto separate tracks and then apply different effects to each drum. But it's a bit of a pissy pants about. So this uh, update to Drum 80 has really changed things up for me. I love this app. I've used it in loads of projects. And so it really speeds up the workflow. Right, so I want to move this project to Logic Pro for iPad. Now I've already done it. Uh, but fortunately, because I've already done it, I know how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. So what I'm going to do is let's just reduce the size of this so you can see exactly what I've got in my project. That's all I have is one minute's worth of music. I'm going to take this back over here. Then what I want to do is I'll go to use mouse. Go to media and we go to mix down. I have missed a bit out of this. Okay, let's let's just backtrack a little bit. Okay. So when I'm in Logic Pro for iPad, I'm going to need to get to all my sounds that I've used here in Cubasis 3. So, for instance, the sound that I've used for King of FM, the sound that I've used for BA1, etc., etc. And also the sounds that um, I've set up, the presets that I've set up for all of my effects. So what I did was, first thing, I went through each and every AUV3 and I saved the current preset with a new name so that when I set the project back up in Logic Pro for iPad, I would be able to get to the exact sounds immediately, right? Okay, now we can go to media. And we go to mix down and we go to create mix down. And all I need to do is make a MIDI mix down. Now, as you'll see, this is already named because I've already done this process, but I'm going to do it again just so that you can see how it's done. So I'm just going to call this like September 2023B. And when you select a MIDI, when you select a mix down a MIDI project, that's, that was harder to say than it needed to be. Um, you don't have any options to select down here. You're just exporting MIDI. It's nice and simple. If you wanted to export just one instrument, then you would just solo it and then do this process. Or you can mute off the ones you don't want and export. Right, so we're going to start mix down. And if I go down here, there we go, look, you'll see I've now got September 2023B. Now, I can come out of Cubasis 3. Let's close that off and we'll open up Logic Pro, which is down here. There we go. Now I need a new project. And if I just press this, and let's see, I'll just add a MIDI track just for the sake of it, um, and then delete it off because I don't need it, right? It's probably a smoother way I could have gone about that, but there we are. Right, so we've got an empty project. I don't want that. Why is it doing that to me? Let's open that up again. 
Okay, maybe maybe I have to have at least one truck in it. Okay. Who knows what that's about? Right. So now I want to import that MIDI. So I'm just gonna come out to Logic Pro for a moment, and then I'm gonna go to my files, and you'll see. I'm already in the correct file because I've already done this. It was the last thing I did, right? But let's pretend that it's not just landed us in the correct file, right? So I'll go to on my iPad. And then I would go to Cubasis 3. And then I would go to Mixdown. And then I find the file that we want. I'm going to go up to the three dots at the top. And we're going to want a slide overview. And now I go back and open up Logic Pro, and we can now grab so oh. I made an error. I clicked on it instead of dragging it. And that's just automatically opened the project up in Cubasis 3. Right, let's just, I'll edit that out later, all right? <laughs> right, let's do this now. So we click and drag into the Logic Pro project. Take it over to bar one. Also import tempo information. I'll say yes. If you look, you'll see that the Logic Pro tempo has automatically been sent to, set to 120, which is standard. Import tempo, yes. Right. Now, I can get rid of this, which is very difficult to do with a mouse, apparently. Oh, no, I've done it. All right. Now, if I just pinch here and we'll just have a little zoom in and you'll see what I've got here now. Now, unfortunately, when it does this, it doesn't retain any color information. We just have everything in that horrid garage band green, but we can soon change that. Nothing to worry about. Now I'm going to delete off this instrument track that I didn't want here. Let's delete that. Okay, so now, because I am an avid labeler of things in my projects, you will see, if I zoom in, that everything is labeled. And we can see exactly what everything is. Hey, Leela. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Right, so, you can see that here, this is the MIDI for King of FM, BA1 and TAL. Noises has a little MIDI block there, but there's actually no MIDI information in for noises. But each and every track has at least one bar worth of MIDI there. And here's the drum MIDI here. Now if I just zoom on, I didn't get rid of that. Look, right, let's try that again. There we go. Right, so there's my drum MIDI. Now you'll see that what this MIDI has done is, you see, I always start a project at least 10 bars in. I always leave at least 10 bars at the beginning of a project because you know what? The amount of times that if you don't do that, you think of a great idea that's going to come in before the intro. And also, things don't render brilliantly in digital audio workstations when you start at bar one, very often people have asked me, why have I got a glitch at the beginning of my mix down? And the reason you have a glitch at the beginning of your mix down is because you started your project at bar one. And so when the digital audio workstation begins that render, it's doing a massive amount of calculations right at the, right at the very beginning of the project. What I actually do when I do a render, I don't, um, I don't start it from the exactly before the bar, you know, where the song begins. I'll drag it back a little bit, you know, maybe just like an eighth of a bar, something like that. And it just gives the digital audio workstation just a moment to just kind of just, you know, get its shit together and kick in. And it gets rid of those little glitches. I've gone on about that for far too long, but it is a really good tip, I promise you. Right, so now... Do I, record a, do I record noises as audio? It was run it to record an audio channel. 
Mm, that's a really good question. Right. So what I do, Leela, is with noises, I use some, um, I can't show you right now, but I will show you in a bit, I promise. But I use some automation to switch it on and off. So I set it up making the sound that I want it to make. And then I use some automation to uh, trigger it on and trigger it off. Because it's not the kind of thing that you usually want running right through a whole project usually. Um, and then at some point during the process of making of making the track, I will freeze it or render it to audio. Because I like everything to be real audio before I do a final mix down. I think that's really, really important. Lots of people disagree with me. But um, I believe that on, on a similar line to what I was talking about earlier, a digital audio workstation, when you ask it to mix down, it does an infinite amount of calculations all at the same time. And if you've ever listened to a mix down back and thought, well, why, is, why is my delay not working exactly like it was when it was playing in the track? Why is that reverb not sounding just exactly the same tail length as it was? I think that may well be the reason why, because since I've started rendering everything to audio before I mix down, I've found that those issues have gone away. Because for a digital audio workstation, um, calcul um, working with uh, real audio, it has a lot less to do than it does when we're looking at plugins and MIDI and everything, right? So, um, 10 bars, I usually have one bar as a kind of counter. Yeah, well, you know, even just one bar is really, really helping your door out. Um, I like to leave the 10 bars. It's how I was taught to do things on the original Cubase when I very first learned how to use a studio many, 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 many centuries ago when I was young. And um, and the, the guy who was running that studio said, he said, always leave like at least 10 bars because if you come up with that brilliant idea for something that should have been like at the beginning before the intro, you, you've just, you've fucked it, right? You've fucked it if you've not left some space. So, um, so I've always done it. It was a lot more difficult to correct in those days, but it's still, you know, it's a bit of a pain in the ass moving an entire project along if you need that space at the beginning, especially if you've got things like tempo changes set up, which we can now do in Logic Pro, which is why I'm using Logic Pro. So looking at this now, what we've got is we've got a whole lot of green MIDI here, and you'll see that what Logic has done is for every track, it's just opened the, the grand piano as a sort of a stock sound. So if I just solo this and go over here and press play, you'll hear. You'll hear a piano, right? And all of these sounds are going to be piano. Now, I'm not going to rebuild my entire Cubasis 3 project in Logic Pro, as you might be expecting, because I've already done it. Um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to go over to that version that I made earlier in a moment to save some time. But I just want to show you this process real quick. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to, let's see, well, let's work with, let's work with um, BA1, right? So um, I'll solo BA1. And then I'll show you what we need to do. We simply go here and you'll see that Logic Pro has... Hey, Sander Wolf, thanks for being here, man. Thank you. Oh, Matthias has joined us. Fantastic. Hey, Matthias. Matthias has been a great supporter and he was very patient and wonderful whilst... I was really, really struggling to do live streams on my Patreon account, which just kept going wrong. Um, but Matthias was there every time just, you know, being patient and encouraging and, and wasting his time while my streams failed. So God, I hope this one goes okay. If this one goes okay, then it's going to mean that I'm going to be streaming right through September, working on this project and helping people. And it's going to mean that I'm going to be able to do my Patreon live streams as well. So, 
Uh, Leela says, I just tried to work on a project to finish in Cubasis 3 and I was frustrated every minute. Okay, is that um, is that because Cubasis 3's workflow is annoying to you? Does it not suit you? Is it um, not a door that you're particularly familiar with, Leela? Um, it, I mean, that's something I can help you with uh, a lot because I use Cubasis 3 an awful lot. But, you know, I understand also if it's, if it's not your thing. Um, I'm just wondering, can you see in any of my cameras my iPad over there? I think in this camera here, you can just see it over there in the corner. I'm using my old iPad Air. Um, it's an Air 1. And I'm using that just so I can see the stream and uh, see that it's running okay. Uh, and I keep getting messages on it, uh, which are from the delicate giants. You know that thing where when you're getting a, a text message, um, briefly a little snippet at the beginning of it will pop up on the be on the top of your screen um, because I've made an album with the Delicate Giants that's not been released yet as you may be aware depending what channels you follow and they seem to be discussing something uh, in our group chat and I wonder if it's got anything to do with the release of the album and I can't check because I'm doing this right so I got distracted there where am I right yes so you will see that Logic Pro has um, it's just given us the a sampler instrument here, which is the grand piano. And all we need to do is click and hold on that, and we'll go to replace. And um, which instrument was I replacing? <laughs> I forgot because I've been rambling. Was it BA1? Let me just backtrack a little moment. I actually seem to be... Let's do BA1. I want to do that one. Right, okay, so, you know, I'm very, I'm very easily distracted. <laughs> Something shiny. Um, okay, right, so I'll press and hold on the sampler, and we'll go to replace, and then BA1 is in my recents, because I use this synth an awful lot, because I love it, it's great, and, and it really lends itself well to the kind of music that I'm making. Let me just change my view over here Let's just give you a bit of a closer look here and i'm going to go to ba1 and so now logic pro for ipad will replace the sampler instrument with ba1 so i can now click on that and then i go here and then if i go into user um which one is the one from cubasis uh think it must be cyber death oh actually i made some notes um i made some notes over here in my in my darth vader book <laughs> um uh, let's see now uh where did i write that then <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe i didn't make a note about that bit then uh mm, apparently not well, I made some notes, right? <laughs> but not all of the notes that I needed. But I'm pretty sure it's that sound. Okay, so uh, let's just play it and we'll find out. Let's find out how stupid I am. Sorry, I should have turned the output down first. Right? Now, that doesn't sound like it did in Cubasis 3, but it is the correct sound. The reason it doesn't sound right is because we need another effect here. We need... Um, we need from Brambos we need a perforator right and I've got a preset saved which I saved in Cubasis 3 which is what I was talking about earlier select that and now if I go back we should have the correct groove Now this is something I do quite a lot. I, I love Perforator, I've used it in so many tracks because I'm not a keyboard player. I can play a bit of keys, you know, I'm all right, but I'm not fabulous. But if I can get some nice uh, chords together on the keys, nice sound, um, I can tart it up with Perforator, make it move, make it do something. And um, 
And so I had a bit of a pissy pants around, you know, I came up with this groove and I thought, that's very, very cyberpunk, that will suit me, right? So I might talk about cyberpunk and cyber metal in a bit, but let's get some work done first, right? So here's my groove. And it sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? Now that's kind of, it's kind of like a bass frequency instrument. Uh, for the beginning of the track, it's kind of instead of bass. Really love it. But for this project, I'm intending to use bass and guitar in it as well. That's what cyber metal is all about. That's the term I use for it instead of, because cyberpunk tends, tends to be mostly just synths, you know? Um, and this is kind of, this is, um, I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Should we, Jamie? We'll talk about that later. Let's get some work done. So, uh, in fact, before I move on to the next stage, let me just have a look at the chat. Um, right, so, turn off notifications. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> uh, DJ Cthulhu, if I, if I am saying that right, please tell me. Um, yeah, I have actually turned off notifications um almost completely on my um on my on my M1 iPad I don't like to get notifications at all while I'm working there um I like them on my phone and um and I'm sort of in the process of working through them on my uh, other iPads cuz I have 3 now um there are some that I want to see so when they pop up I press on them and I say I don't want to see that one anymore but some I need, <laughs> so, and what would be great is if I could set it up so that if I get a text from my missus, I do see that, but not text from anyone else. I don't know if you can do that. I should look into that. All right, so, what else are we saying? Um, right, so Leela says, I was working in Cubasis 3 for months until I switched to Logic, which fixes 90% of my frustrations, and now I can't go back. Okay, that's really interesting to hear because when I moved from Cubasis 3 to Logic Pro, I found Logic Pro incredibly frustrating. I think I see what's going on with the cameras now. That one keeps freezing um, and going glitchy, which is insane because that's my best iPhone. I wonder where that's happening. Um, well, there's not much I can do about it right now. Um, so, I found that very, very frustrating. Um, just the difference in workflow because I was so used to Cubasis 3. I mean, I was really, really fast, really, really good with it. And I learned it inside out. But I wanted to learn Logic Pro partly because I thought that it would be really good for my channel making videos about Logic Pro. That's turned out not to be true. My videos on Logic Pro, which I think are quite good, have had really, really poor views. Uh, so I'm quite disappointed in that. But I once I, once I got used to it, which was really hard because I don't use GarageBand. I don't like GarageBand at all. I can't stand it. So it was a very different workflow for me, but I am getting used to it and I'm liking it, um, mainly because of the extra things that I can do that I can't do in Cubasis 3. But, you know, like I'm still really slow with it um, and I find the audio editing immensely slow compared to Cubasis 3. And of course, I do a lot of guitar and bass stuff so that I find frustrating, but hopefully that will be improved when we finally get an update, Apple. Anyway, yes. Right, so uh, who else have we got here? Um, Taya says the stream is working awesome and Jamie looking great as ever. I <laughs> love this song, Timber, already. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'd love to. It's my first in trying to see what it's all about. Also on vacation right now. Oh, where are you, Mateus? I don't have company time to steal and make music. It's difficult until I'm back to work. <laughs> so Mateus gets more music made when he's at work? How does that work, dude? Fill us in. Tell us. Tell us. Yeah, Gerald, you know, I find Cubasis 3 is so obvious. Everything is where I expect it to be. 
But, you know, I'm a Cubase guy. I'm, the first door I learned how to use was Cubase way back when I, when I was taught how to use a studio. So, you know, maybe it's just that. Right, Mateus is in the Czech Republic countryside at the moment. I've been to the Czech Republic on tour, and um, I had a great time there. I really, really enjoyed the Czech Republic. Um, we had a great, great gig there, and I wish I could have stayed, and I wish that I'd had a chance to go back. Maybe, maybe one day I will. Okay, so, Leela says she was just a singer until she discovered Garage. Well, I'll see, I'll see. Okay, what... How long ago is that, Leela? Because that being the case, you've made some stunning, stunning progress. Uh, I should get back to talking about this. Right, so, okay. So I've shown you how I've moved the MIDI from my project on Cubasis 3. If you missed the beginning of the stream and you missed some of that, you can always watch back later. Um, I showed you how I moved the MIDI from Cubasis 3 over into Logic Pro. And I've given you a, a little insight there into how you store your... Uh, presets in Cubasis 3, then you can open them again in Logic Pro and get back to all of your sounds. What I suggest is that you make a list of all the <laughs> tracks that you have in your project and all the things that you used on those tracks and the preset names that you need, like I intended to do in my Darth Vader book, but I missed out all the ones for the synths, right? So anyway, it's a great idea. If only I could stick to that myself. Um, okay, so Mateus says, his home office is the recording room as well. I'll just say corporate meetings have never been as productive as I made a switch to remote work. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> okay, right, so, um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come out of this example project, right, and I'm going to remember to use my mouse, and I'm going to click on this project called Songtember, which hopefully will load up as it should. And let me just pinch and zoom here. Go to the beginning of the project. And we will press play. And let's have a listen to it, right? Right, okay, so I've set it all back up, right, I got all my presets, all my effects, everything back to how it was in Cubasis 3. And um, a couple of little uh, surprise things happened as well, um, which I'll come to in a moment. First thing, I've noticed if you use noises in Logic Pro, then usually when you load up a project, it will not play. Right, it's making a liar out of me now and it's playing. If it doesn't work, all you have to do is just go here, open it up one time, and then it will most definitely play. It's, sometimes it's like it just, you know, just wants a bit of attention, right? It just wants to be touched. And then it'll behave. Oh, I said I'd show you that automation, didn't I? So, um, the automation for noises. Uh, yes. Press the automation button. And then we go here. Um, now, which one did I use? I used trigger. There we are. And there it is. So it's very, very simple. I'm just 
Um, I looked through here and I found the lane for the trigger on and off. And then I just uh, pressed at the beginning of the project, pressed again at the end of the project, dragged this one down for off. That one is on and, you know, and if I want noises to kick in again in the, in the project later on, I can just do that again. So effectively what it's doing is it's just kind of standing by. You know, um, pretty cool. Have I done any presets for noises? Um, I have actually. Um, I have. Um, how many have I done? I, I, I've, I've I've done a few. Um, I will check whether I've uploaded them to the um, presets folder on my Patreon later. In fact, I'm going to use my Darth Vader book, right? And I'm going to make a note. Because I'm really old, and um, and I forget these things. Where's my pen? I want to make a note. Uh, right, noise. I'll put it at the bottom here. They might need that space. Noises presets for Patreon. Uh, I will check, and if I haven't already uploaded them, I will get that done. Um, I haven't. Oh, I just twatted that camera. Stupid hippie. Um, I haven't um, done an awful lot of loading in samples. It's the kind of thing I like to piss pants around with, actually, and I keep meaning to with noises. But the thing is, is I really like a lot of the the samples that are there. I've been using those. I just think I just think they're pretty wonderful, you know. So, right, okay. So that was the uh, automation for noises. Right, so we'll go back to here. What are you even doing, Leela? Yeah, um, <laughs> Leela, and anyone here who isn't part of my Patreon account, um, for patrons, I have a folder that's in my Dropbox account, and in there I just put um, I put presets for things that I make. I put um, I put samples. Um, I keep, there's, there's quite a lot of samples there already. I keep meaning to add to that. If anyone asks me for any particular sounds that I've created in a track or anything, I'm quite happy to do that. It all takes time, but if you ask for it, I'll put it on my list in my Darth Vader book and it will get done. <laughs> so, um, right. What do I need to do now? Uh, oh yes, as I mentioned, there were a couple of surprises. Now, here's the thing. When I found out that Drum 80 had now got multiple sound and I got really, really excited, I checked it in AUM, awesome. I checked it in Cubase 3, awesome. I checked it in Logic Pro, I couldn't get it to work. Um, now, the way I, if I'm honest, the way I learned to do the multibus out thing in Logic Pro, which is a bit of a stupid workaround and hopefully in the update, when we get it, Apple, thank you, um, uh, it will be improved because it's kind of like it's not obvious that you can do it, and it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a stupid workaround that you have to do to make it happen. Um, I learned it from Jade Star's video. Jade made an excellent video about how you do it. Um, so there's no point, kind of you know me explaining all that. Jade's already got that covered. So go to Jade Star's channel. You'll find a brilliant video about how it's done. Um, now, if you've watched that video, what Jade tells you to do is you open the normal version of a multi-output of a multi-output app. So, not the multi-output version of it, but the normal version. Then you set up the sense. Then you go to um, go to the app itself, press on it to replace. Then you find that app again, and it will now give you an option of a multibus out version of it. Then, once you've selected that, you will then be able to get those multiple outputs into your sends by going to your desk. And uh, if I click up here and show, um, what do I need? Uh, yeah, here. So, you'll see here, I've kind of given this away before I got to it. Um, <laughs> so, so 
okay, Let's go back a little bit, right? So, uh, so Drum 80, I couldn't get it to work in Logic Pro. Um, and I gave up on it. And I actually messaged the developer and said, you know, it didn't work in Logic Pro. Are you going to fix that? You know, I'd like to use it like that in Logic Pro. And he, st and he messaged me back and said, well, it should work. It should be working. I'm like, mm, it must be me. I must be doing something wrong. Um, I found out that if you go to click on replace drum 80 before you set up all the sends and everything, do that first, you will get the multibus out version. Then you set up your sends. And then once you've set up your sends, you go to this window here and you select the different outputs from drum 80 and it spreads over all these tracks. So if I press play here, you'll see my drums are not coming out one channel, they're coming out of all he all of these. Well, when we get to a bit of the track that's got more than just a kick in it, yeah? Right, so that was a really, really nice surprise that um, it does in fact actually work. It's just the whole thing's a bit, you know, it's a bit of a, it really is a pissy pants around getting this multibus out thing to work in Logic Pro. Right, I'm just gonna get rid of that. I don't like my desk to be too busy. I like this icon here because I can go to this icon and in my desk, I can just have open the things that I need to be open. And then I can have longer faders to play with when I'm doing my mixing. I really, really like that particular aspect of Logic Pro. Let me point out something else while I'm looking at this mixing desk. Other than noises here, um, which apparently I've missed during this process, you'll see that most of my faders are fairly, fairly near to the top, uh, the sort of zero dB line. And this is what we call gain staging. Now, some of you will already know about this, some of you may not, so I'll cover it very briefly. Um, gain staging is the process of trying to make it so that your fader is round about this area. Adjustments are easier to make in this area. It's much more difficult to adjust volumes when your faders are way down the bottom because moving by a slighter percentage near the bottom of the fader actually changes the volume more. So some most mixers, right? Most mixing engineers would tell you that this is a good process. There are those that don't believe in it and don't do it. So you don't have to do it if you don't want to. The way that I've achieved this is I have in each of the apps that I'm using, I've turned down the volume within the app so that I can have it higher on the fader. If you're using an app that doesn't give you a master volume at all, you can maybe, if you've got an effect, you know, if you've got um, a compressor on there or an EQ with a, a master volume out, you can change it with that. Anything that gets it into this region is really, really helpful. Gerald says, yes, I find Logic Pro workflow really frustrating. Yeah, and as I say, I really, I, I, I did. I did. I, I fell out with it, right? There was, there was, there was language. There was things getting thrown. There were, <laughs> there was some, there were some hippie tantrums along the way. Because, you know, it's frustrating when you're really, really used to one particular door and you work really fast in it, you're really used to it. And then you try and learn another and it's like, I'd be getting so much more work done if I wasn't using this one. But, you know, if you decide to learn it, you've got to knuckle down. You've got to do it. You've got to make yourself do it. And in my case, I'm going to say it was worth it. I'm going to say, you know, despite the frustrations I do have with it. My one problem is that slow audio editing thing. I just... Mm, hoping for improvements soon right so um that's what i did to get my levels like they are now this is nice because you'll see in my project here i've only got i've got three synths i've got noises i've got some drums right that's it when i'm looking at my project in this view i've got just these few instruments and then i go to my desk and i've got the synths over here then my drums, then all the multibus 
well, the multi outputs are all stretched across here. And uh, here I've got the um, the reverb for the kit and on this bus here I've got the gated reverb. I made a video about how to make an 80 sounding gated reverb for a snare and if I actually just um, solo the snare maybe I can just demonstrate this gated reverb for you. Uh, I'll just jump across here. Yeah. Right, so it's a it's a big reverb, but it closes real fast. It's not a long tail reverb. Um, and uh, yeah, I made a video all about how to make that with Mixbox, so I'm not going to go over it now. Right, and what was the other thing I wanted to tell you? I'll tell you the right the other right the other thing that I wanted to tell you. This is really really important. When I was setting up this project in when I was resetting up in Logic Pro for iPad, I was setting up Drum 80. And I didn't know that I could have an, a multibus out version of Drum 80. I, di I didn't know I was going to be able to do that uh, in Logic Pro. So, I'd got the normal version of Drum 80. And, um, and when I was playing the track, what would happen is if I just open up drum 80 what would happen I'd start the MIDI playing and there'd be no volume on drum 80 and I'd look in the app and the volume would be at zero so I'd turn it up and then it would play fine for the rest of the track and then when I played the project again it would do it again and this volume would go down and I was like why is it doing that well the MIDI that Cubasis 3 had exported was for the multibus output version of Drum 80, right? And the main out, the first output from Drum 80 is a mix of the whole kit. So when it's multibus out, it's zero volume, right? On that, on that original bus. So the MIDI was just banging the volume down to zero. And I'm like, I couldn't work it out. It took me ages to work it out. Why? But no volume is needed on that track because you've got faders for all of the other outputs from Drum 80, from the multibus out. So eventually, when I accidentally discovered that I could replace Drum 80 with the multibus out version and I opened up that, then everything worked fine, right? So maybe I ought to make a video about that. But um, it might be kind of difficult to explain. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to working on my track. So I have some ideas. Um, they've just sort of come to me as I've been waffling along there. So this was a one-minute demonstration for Drum 80 that I made for a, a short video. And... I like it and I want to work on it further, but the arrangement that I had for that one minute video is not going to lend itself to a long track. You know, like a, I mean, it wants to be a few minutes long when I finish it, right? So, um, so I wonder if I pulled that cable out of that camera and put it back in, would it sort of like, would it sort of make it work? <laughs> It's annoying me now that I've noticed it. I wonder if it might make it work. Um, it would probably be very silly to do that midstream. But I'm very tempted. Let's take a vote on it. Right, so in the chat, either put do it or don't do it. And we'll see what results come in and then I'll I'll act upon on public opinion, right? Uh, I just want to go to this screen here. Right, now, I'm thinking this section here, you see where the drums are chopped here? Over here, the drums change from this busy tom-based groove here 
to uh, to this more subtle one. And then like after eight bars, it goes back in. Um, that doesn't really work. Um, not for, it doesn't lend itself to a longer track anyway. So, um, so I think we've got one vote for not. <laughs> um, mm, come on, cast your votes. Are you, are you frightened of crashing my stream? I don't think it will crash the stream. It could potentially crash that camera, but it won't crash the stream. I'm fairly sure. And all the way through the stream so far, he's said excellent connection. I'm going to have to stop looking at that. I don't want to jinx it. Right, so here's what I'm thinking. Let's chop this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change. Let's change snap here to uh, we want it to snap to a bar and I'm going to move this to here and I'm going to go to my scissors tool now I have to say I find this in Logic Pro a little bit silly um, I shouldn't have to pull down on a pair of scissors it's a bit gimmicky um, you know I I just I would like it to just do it right I've selected scissors I've selected where I want it to cut I want it to just cut I don't want to pull down on a pair of scissors it should be op optional to turn that off you know it's a bit sort of like it's nice at first you know but then after a bit you know just it, it would just be quicker if I didn't have to do that one extra thing what a whinger <laughs> listen to me having a proper good whinge right that's why you tuned in, right? Um, okay, um, we'll chop that there. Right, so now you can see I've got these obvious sections of the project. This should definitely not happen here. Um, I like the fact that we've got about 16 bars before this melody kicks in. Um, I think we've got, you know, I, I, I want to build it before the big melody kicks in, I think. I think that's what I want to do. So... I want to move, well, let's unselect the scissor tool. Let's move this over here. Um, yeah, okay. And that there, I don't think there is any automation data. Why does it keep popping up that? Uh, uh, oh, well, whatever. Right, and we'll move this one as well. Um, put that there. Right. And then this one bit matches that bit there's nothing actually in this midi part here uh, hmm. I don't know I don't know but I think I want a change of chords for that section I want to I want to create yeah let's duplicate these drums and move them across Um, and then we've got a new section happening here. Um, right, yeah, okay. So up to this point, all I've got is the same chord progression going round and round and round, um, which I made a note of in my book in case I forgot what chords I played. Um, I, I, I am aware, by the way, that the um, YouTube chat has been very um, hit and miss recently and when I've been watching other people's streams it keeps like stopping working and then it starts working again and it seems like you've missed a bunch of things that people have said all the, all the people have seen them some haven't um, and you've gone all quiet and nobody's telling me whether to switch this to unplug this camera and plug it back in or not so um, are you still out there um, right so I've got basically the same thing there for 16 bars and a new element needs to be added at some point. Maybe it would work with that melody. Um, right. So if... Uh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Let's 
erase this and we'll duplicate this cross there right and then I need a new section here right so I need I need new chords I think I don't I don't want to have the same chords going like over and over and over I need a new section so um so what are my chords so far I'm going to move this by the way uh Actually, let me just move this. I'm going to use my overhead view. I'm going to move this keyboard out of my way. Don't fall off the desk, you bastard. Right, and um, I really, really like this tempo pad that I've been sent by Sonido. Um, I have this set up for if I want to uh, do any drums. Just being careful here because I don't want to um, I don't want to knock the um, the powered hub that everything's plugged into because it might sort of make a lot of noise through the mixing desk. I need this on my right hand. This is really cool. It's a little bit obscured by that camera. Um, it's a really really cool, you know, sort of sixteen pad drum editing thing. It's superb for, you know, just playing in your drums and stuff like that. I'm going to make a video on it, and I'm going to be using it through this stream. Um, I made a video recently about the Starry Pad from Donna, which is a similar price in a similar category. It's of a similar standard. So I'm going to be sort of, you know, comparing the two things um, as we go along. I might use a bit of both. Um, I would say they're probably of a very, very... They're of a very similar standard. There are a couple of advantages um to uh they, they both have their advantages is what i should say so i'm going to use both throughout these streams and i'll point out what those advantages and disadvantages are to each one so that you know if you're in the market for something like that it might be helpful what am i doing just get that out of my way okay i think i'm comfortable now right so my chords my chords uh, in my book. Right, so the chords that I already have. I'll put that over there. Right, so I have um, a second inversion of C to a C4 to a C2 back to C. Okay, and then we are playing an E, so that's going to be a G, A, F. Okay. Right, okay. I want something that's going to kind of take us somewhere from there. So, just getting distracted from, uh, by the chat, from C to Shining. <laughs> well, I like playing on the white keys, what can I tell you? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so what would work then? Um, what have I not used so far that's in this key? I could maybe go to a D minor. That's quite nice, what's that? That's a B. Oh, 
That's quite nice. What's that? That must be an A. So that's so that's D minor, B dim, C A minor. Then we want a variation. Okay. Repeat the first one. Then I want, I want, I want drama. I want it to go back into the, the original chord progression dramatically. Uh, so let's see if we'll, we'll try a climb. Sounds a bit, maybe it sounds a bit obvious, but I've not got enough keys. Uh, I'll go up an octave, right. And the first chord of the other progression is a C... Uh, yes, but it's second inversion, so it's there. There. So it would go, that climb would go. And the C. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that kind of works. I'm kind of imagining what it's going to be like with the, with the bass line. And um, I think that would work. Yeah, I I use I use a Locrian mode uh, an awful lot actually, DJ. Um, but in this one, my concept for this track is um, is to kind of have like a synth wave bass, and then turn it into cyber metal. So, to talk about this very very briefly, I um, am a massive massive fan of of cyberpunk music. And the movies, you know, I, I, I just love that whole thing. And for a long time, I was listening to cyberpunk and thinking, you know, I'd love to make some music like this. But, you know, I'm really a guitar and bass guy. And it doesn't really require that. I also love making soundtrack music. And ultimately, what I want to get into is making soundtrack music for games, movies, TV, that sort of thing. That's my ultimate goal. Um... And, um, you know, I, I love metal guitars and I write songs. But my songs don't have metal guitars in them because my voice is pissy pants, right? So I can't have, like, big, loud, crashing guitars supporting my voice because it doesn't work. It sounds stupid. My voice just doesn't carry that. So all these things kind of going around in my head. And I was driving my car to a rehearsal one day and I thought, hang on, why don't you make cyberpunk music but with metal guitars, replace some of the synth stuff with metal guitars, use real bass, and also incorporate some of the elements from soundtrack music that you love, and put that all together and just sort of do that, right? Get a body of that work together, and then use that body of work to see if you can get some work doing soundtracks for people. Right, and it just kind of went bing, and so that's what I've been doing. You know, that's what that's where I'm going. So the the um, so the concept. I mean, some of these tracks I've approached from a very metal point of view. I started with the guitars. Others I've started with crazy synth stuff going on. I thought I'd try one here, where uh, because cyberpunk is kind of like synth wave, but sort of bastardized. It's kind of more challenging sounds and darker and angrier. So I thought I'll start with a synthwave kind of a thing and then we'll sort of bastardize it. 
like with guitars and crazy synths and distortion and stuff. So that's where I'm coming from with this one. Um, so I'm quite happy to go with the very basic chords for this one. Um, yeah. Okay, so so Leela loves cyberpunk aesthetic. Yeah, well, it's just Vangelis, Blade Runner. Yeah, yes, DJ. Um, and metal in electronic music, Leela. Yeah, it blends. It all blends so much better than I thought it would. The one thing you have to be very, very careful of is the metal guitars. If you're wanting the sort of low-tuned metal guitars, then you can very quickly make a project with lots of synths in it um very muddy very quickly so you have to really think about the frequencies that you're playing in and i love using that sort of um you know the 606 uh bass kind of sound you know the sort of the squeaky acid bass thing i love that and that works well in cyberpunk but i don't want to use it as a bass instrument because i want to play a real bass so i'm using it in kind of a slightly higher frequency and that's why i have this um donna uh, B1 bass synth over here it might appear in this track, it might not. I've used it in a couple already. I've also used Acid to make that sound. Um, and there's a preset in Logic Pro which is uh, along those lines which is very, very good. Um, anyway, I'm kind of waffling instead of making music. Let's do, let's, uh, let's make some progress here. So, uh, I came up with some chords. Can I remember them now? Um, I had, a, oh yes, yeah, starts with D minor, right? <laughs> I've gone knocked to fire and I can move my keyboard up. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can record this. Um so I'll move my pointer thing over here. And uh I'll record here. And I'll put my I don't need my metronome, I've got some drums. So we'll go with record down here. Right. <laughs> And I have immediately played an incorrect chord. So we'll just delete that off. Here's a thing that I think could be a little bit simplified in Logic Pro. I don't think that you should have to press on a part and get a drop down menu to get to delete. I'd like a delete button up the top. I think that would be really helpful. Right, let's have another go at that. Oh, pressing all kinds of wrong buttons. Go over there. Right, uh, and play a D minor to start with. By the way, your track for the project is... Oh, that's not directed to me. Okay. Um, the Donna Gizmo as a portable control service. Do you mean that the B1? Because... Um, Doug Woods has just done a sound test room video about the B1. He released it this morning, uh, and it's superb. Um, I'm in touch with Donna. I've had a couple of things from them which I've, I've demoed. Um, I've got a pedal I've got to do for them as well, and um, and I like their stuff. You know, it's cool. I like the B1. It has a lot, a lot going for it. I do, I do recommend it. I haven't done a video with it yet because that one's not actually from them because they didn't have any left. That actually belongs to a friend um, and it will have to go back. So I hope they are going to send me one. Right. Let's see if I can play these chords, right? I ran out of drums. Okay, but the, but they went they kind of went okay up to there, I think. So let's just uh, we'll copy these drums over here and go to here and record again. I 
I'm not sure what happened there. It was like pictures, no sound. Let's try that again. Okay, is that because maybe I'm giving myself too long a count in there? Let's just go from here, see if that works. Oh, I know. Yeah, so I've got the extended. What one do with that bit? Uh, just put it there, record from here. I may just have to edit that in later. So what's my chords? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah. I'm on to the end bit, okay. I will get this. Okay, I kind of finally got there. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the drum pad one, the starry pad. Have you seen my video on it? It really is, um, it, it is very, very good. I'm talking to you in the chat down there instead of looking at the camera. Um, yeah, it, it, it's cool. Um, did a video with it. I'm very happy with it. I still use it, but then I've got sent this one from Sonidio, so I'm, I'm kind of, you know, you know, like swapping and changing between the two, comparing. Right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to... Uh, glue these two bits together to begin with. So uh, I'll select both these MIDI parts and tap and join. Right, now let's go into this MIDI and see what's going on because... Because... Uh, I want to solo that. Let's solo it and press the wrong button. Let's let's solo it and have a listen from here. Oh come on. There. Mm. Right, okay, so that Okay, you know what might help is if I just select all this. And we'll go to here and let's quantize this to um, what? Eighth note? Better. Yeah, I started playing before it. I I, I was a bit previous, Gerald. <laughs> it started too soon, you know. Right. Okay. So that um, I'm kind of happy with. That. Let's just see how those chords flow after after the other chords. You know, music to me is is all about chords. Um, I'm I'm not saying everyone should make music like I make. I'm just talking from my own personal point of view. It's all about the chords. Um, you know, 
melody, harmony, everything comes from chords. You get a great chord structure going on. Um, and you know, you don't have to be complicated chords. I love using complicated chords, but you don't have to be complicated chords, just chords that work. Um, get that down first, everything else is easy. Okay, now these chords could do with a little bit of a uh, little bit of tidying up, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, not too much of that during the stream because I don't bore you. I can do that in my own time. Um, but there's something here. Yeah, there's a glitch there. Look, let's just get rid of that one. Get rid of that note. Right, just play that. That should sound better now. Much better. Right, okay. And I thought I heard something around here. Hey, Alan. <laughs> nice to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Leela said something in the chat and I meant to comment on it and now I can't remember what it was. Let me just uh, write, talk to the camera. How did I fail to know it? Join, how did I fail to know it's join? Uh, yeah, um, join is um, it's immeasurably helpful. Um, I struggled to find it at first because of the way that it is listed. This is one of the little things, there's a lot of little things like this with Logic Pro. It's the first version. We've not had an update yet. We are waiting, Apple. Um, so, if we tap on a piece of, in fact, let me just select two pieces of MIDI. If I go tap on the first one, right, bounce and join. Now, if you go into bounce and join, I should be using my mouse for this. If you go into bounce and join, you see the bounce in place option and obviously that relates to mixing down real audio from MIDI um, which I've made a video all about that if you don't know how that works I've already made a video all about that one of my Logic Pro videos that hardly anyone has watched and um, and so you wouldn't expect it to be in that same menu but it is in fact if you want to join two pieces of MIDI up you just select join there and there we go, it's all joined together. But I don't want it joined together. So I'll just press undo, and there we go. Right, so yeah, I totally understand why you missed it. It took me ages to find it. Um, digging the shorter, moving notes over the longer held chords. Yeah, um, it's something I, I do a lot. I do, I do an awful lot of, of that. I like it when... You have this kind of like sound that has, um, yes, called gluing cubases. Yes, that's correct. Um, I don't know why they have to call it something different. You know, I mean, cubase is the original. You know, you copied the functionality and copy the name as well. It makes it easier for us to all find it as we move around in different doors. Just keep calling it the same thing. It's fine. You know, you're not going to get shot or arrested or anything, right? So. Um, I like that. Um, I like with synths because I'm a guitar guy. And guitars are kind of aggressive and abrasive. So I like it with synths like this that is sort of a softer sound. And I like them to sustain and just change the odd note here and there, which moves it to another chord. But keep the sound flowing. It sounds lush. I just, 
I like that. Works for me. Right. Um, now, I've got some new chords here. And it's something I can build around, but I've just had an idea, and I, and I think I'm going to go with this. I think this is something, is something that could work, and it might be nice for you to see this. So, for me, there is one main reason why I'm using Logic Pro a lot at the moment, and that is because I can change tempo. And we asked Steinberg for this in Cubase history, and don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking Steinberg, because what they did with Cubasis did wonders for the iOS music community. Um, it's still a solid piece of software. And Steinberg, great. Uh, but we did ask them for tempo track um, right from like back in Cubasis two days. You know, we were asking for it and asking for it. And it's the most requested feature has been for years and years and years, and we still don't have it. So if you choose to do a project in Cubasis 3, you, you're you going to make it at one tempo. I mean, you know, your workarounds are, you could maybe go half time, double time. The only way that you can change tempo in Cubasis 3 is if you ignore the bar lines completely. Um, or if you make the drums in something else and then import them as real audio into Cubasis 3 and then just playing time to the real audio drums, but they're not ideal workarounds, you know? So this is the reason why I'm using Logic Pro um, now, because I can change tempo. And if it wasn't for that, you know, I might not bother. I might not bother at all, because I have to pay for this every month, and I've already got Cubasis 3. But anyway, I've got this idea, right? So this synth up here, this one, I'll, I'll, I'll play this solo for you. So this is a sound that I made with uh, King of FM that I really, really like. And it's kind of ratty and it's kind of a bit nasty and it sounds a bit far away. And that really, I like it. And I kind of think it might sound really good as an introduction. Um, so you remember when I was talking about leaving some space at the beginning of your track? Um, I have done. So I've got room to move this. And I'm thinking... This could make a nice introduction if it was like maybe slower and maybe we can we can kind of make it gradually speed up. I mean it might sound shit, but let's try it. So so what this will involve is first thing, I'm gonna press use your mouse, I'm gonna press copy. I'm going to grab this piece of MIDI and I'm going to drag it to the beginning of the track. I don't need that soloed anymore. Now I'm going to come back here. Right, so from there, played at normal speed. Now let's have a look at our uh, tempo track, shall we? Um, press this. And this will reveal our tempo track. Now, the speed, I'm just going to zoom into this a bit. Now, the speed of this track is 118 BPM. So I want to start by changing move to draw here. And I'll go here and I'm just going to, I want to make a dot. Very exciting dot. Change it back to move. I just want to press on this and make sure that that's done that at 118 BPM. It has. So now I'm going to go back to draw. And at the beginning of this MIDI here, oh, another dot. All right, go back to move. I'm going to drag this down. And um, I don't know how slow. Let's try it round about, round about 90 BPM, something like that. Right, now you'll see now we've got this very um, angular thing going on here. It's one speed and then it jumps to another speed. But if you grab this dot here, now it will give us a curve. So we can make it so that it will kind of sp like speed up real fast and then the acceleration will decrease 
or we could have it kind of starting off kind of slow and then it'll suddenly pick up in speed. I'm thinking maybe something like that there. Let's just kind of have a listen to it. Um, might need a metronome on so you can hear it speeding up. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, it's sort of to have that amount of control over it. God, I wish I could do this in Cubase History. It would be nice to see a big update for Cubase History, Gerald. And it's kind of overdue because since they released it, you know, they did two updates a year, would like two big updates a year. So Cubase History didn't like update, you know, every few weeks like a lot of apps do. They'd work really, really hard on a huge update and, you know, check it and check it and check it, and try and be sure that it was going to be everything that it should be when it came out and um, so every sort of six months you get a huge update and a couple of little fixes here and there and um and i think it's the end of last year that we last had an update so you know it's kind of overdue it would be awesome if they brought out like if they brought out cubasis 3 with the extra features that q that logic pro has that i like um to make a version of it just for me, that would be awesome. You hardly ever quantize the grid you usually have. Well, you know what? Uh, quantizing, what I've found is making this kind of music. If I quantize the synths and the drums uh, so that they're kind of really, you know, really, really on the money, that works really well for me for this kind of music. Now, my guitars and bass... I don't time them. I do a take and I do a take and I do a take until I get a good take. And those things need to be human for me. And I've got, I'm making a video. I've got a video sort of I've started about why that's important and why if you have two guitar parts that are human and not timed, just played really accurately but not timed, that will sound bigger than 10 guitars that are timed. Um, and a lot of people, you know, disagree with me about it. And a lot of, you know, big records are made with these incredibly timed guitars, stacks and stacks and stacks of guitars, all timed. It sounds like one guitar, you know, doesn't sound big. But yeah, it's just my opinion. But I'm making a video about that. Uh, but I'm not doing it right now, I'm doing this. So, um, so yeah, I kind of I like this. I'm going to try this... Um, Starting a bit slower, I think that might be nice. Let's try it more like 70 BPM ish and go back here. Um, uh, what about that curve? Maybe a little more like this. So it's like a steady climb and then it suddenly, suddenly speeds up towards the end. You can see the tempo gradually going up here. Hey, Vortex is here, dude! <laughs> and it speeds up. Alright. I like that. I'm happy with that. Let me use my mouse. Okay. Um, I, ha I have another idea now. Another idea came to mind, right? But before I dive into that, I have two things I have to say. First of all, Vortex is here. And Vortex is currently taking a little bit of time out of his channel. Um, got some stuff going on. Um, so it's fantastic to see you in the chat saying hi, dude. And um, sending lots of love, man. And um, everybody in the chat say hi and love you lots to Vortex. Right, now, um, what was the other thing? The other thing, right, oh yes, my new idea, right. So, um, does anyone have speakers? It's a really awesome app and it just gave me this idea that it might be nice to, let me just, um, I'm just going to kind of make this loop here and then we'll go down here and after 
king of fm let's add actually i need to look at king of fm first and have i got some reverb on this i've got chorus i can't remember where the reverb is in this app uh oh yeah there it is i'm going to switch off the reverb it sounds fantastic but you'll see why in a moment so now we go down here uh, let's add from audio thing i'll tell you another thing i don't like about logic pro uh, this guy really had a go at me the other day about saying this you know like as if I, so we're talking about like an end of the world matter i'm only talking about a detail in logic pro but <laughs> some people get so so excited about these things um I would prefer it if the apps were not listed under developer or if there was an option to choose between listed by developer or listed by name of app because half the time I can't remember which bloody developer made it, right? So <laughs> maybe that's just my problem. Um, okay, yeah, maybe it's a me problem. So speakers. Now, if you haven't had a go with speakers yet, what it gives you is, uh, you see these two windows here? What it's giving you is two options. Right? So, uh, just a moment. Yes, yes, DJ, you can modulate, automate the tempo in Logic Pro, and that's why I'm using it. That is, there are other things I really like about it, but that's the reason why I'm using it. That's what we need in Cubasis 3, and until it has it, it's, you know, I'm going to be using Logic Pro because I'm really, really tired of not being able to change my tempo. Um, so, yeah, right. So what Speakers gives you is in these two windows, you can choose two things. Um, you can choose to make it sound like it's like the instrument that you're affecting has been recorded with a particular kind of mic or as if the sound of it is coming out of a particular kind of speaker. And we've got these lovely vintage emulations of things i'm going to switch this one off so we can hear just one at a time and here in this window we have this old microphone right? or this kind of mic or this thing or a piezo right? there's a few of those Right, and it's it's cool. It's really cool. I want to kind of make this sound kind of really grainy and distant. Right, the telephone. Okay. Now, then we have a few um, controls down here that we can change to make the telephone sound different. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to play around here with the echo and feedback um, and the mix for that. And then underneath here, we have um, some distortion, different kinds of distortion and a compressor. Let's have a play with those things. Oh, yeah. The other thing I meant to ask about was, has Doug got a premiere tonight? Because if Doug's got a premiere tonight, I presume it'd be at eight o'clock. And, and so I'll finish at eight o'clock. But uh, can anyone check that or does anyone know? Just let me know in the chat, please, if you if you can. I forgot to check before I started streaming. I want to go to this view for a moment. Okay, so I'm going to have a play around with these controls here. <laughs> now, I like that. I like that. Now you'll see why I took the reverb off. Let's have a different kind of distortion on. See what that's like. A softer drive. That's nice. Drive it harder. Okay. Now I'm going to switch this one off. Switch this one on. Let's pick another sound. Oh. 
<laughs> I like that already. Right, now I'm going to turn the mix down. So I've turned down the mix on both of these things, and now I'm going to blend both things in. Right, now another really awesome thing that this app does. Um, yeah, it, it will sound weird in, in headphones, uh, DJ, because it does. It sounds really, really weird. It might be, I mean, it's kind of a harsh sound to keep listening to over and over this, so I'm not going to be dwelling on this for too long. The sound that I made in King of FM is harsh anyway. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, like, um, tie your ears out with it, so... Um, so I'm not going to dwell on this for a long time, but um, there's a filter in this app. There's um, routing possibilities. I need to do another video where I go deeper into this app. There's also a lot of presets, but I really, really love just arsing around with this one um, myself and seeing what I can come up with. That Now, the reason I wanted to use this app mainly is because you can create some background noise with it. And this is for the beginning of the track. I want atmosphere. So... And I'm going to want all this to switch off before this sound kicks back in later in the track. And so I will automate it off. But we'll come to that later. Uh, did anyone check if, if Doug has a premiere tonight for me? Now, the background noise. Right? It will make that background noise when it's not even playing. And the background noise, you can choose between a bunch of things. Right? Boiler room, broken radiator, computer noise. Right, I'm looking for something kind of not subby. Freezer. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, no, we definitely don't want that. Hard disk. That's pretty cool. Oh, that could work. Oh, siren. Tape. Okay. <laughs> awesome. That is definitely not the right vibe. Spooky ass. Tram station. All right, there's a lot to pick from here. Um, rain is nice. I don't think vinyl's right for this one. Okay, which one did I like best? Kind of like the hard disk one. Right, you can blend it. So I'm gonna pro I'm gonna play this and blend it in. like that. Now I think, I think with this, with this envelope, does this, yeah, so with the envelope I can stop it playing when, um, when the app's not producing any sound. Okay, yeah. 
Oh, it's dug in 14 minutes, is it? I will wind up in time for that. Right. Um, yeah, don't want to, don't want to, I would never want to compete with Doug or, or cause him any issues. So, um, I think that sound is okay for now. Um, now, let's just think now. So, what I have so far, um, I can close out my tempo track for now. I don't need that um, taking up window space. Mm, so, uh, I, when I get over here, I've got these new chords. I'm quite happy with that. They need tidying up a little bit. And I've got this um, new drum beat that kicks in. And then we'll probably go straight back to these chords and these drums here. Um, now, what I want to do is leave lots of space melody-wise in this track for me to play some guitar stuff. Um, that's going to be fun, adding, you know, some heavy guitars to this. Uh, maybe some lead work, I think. Uh, and some bass guitar. So, thank you very much, Gerald. Um, so, yeah. Uh, which thing to do next? I have another idea. Um, which is to put some... Um, some uh, some choir behind uh, this introduction from King of FM. Uh, what does that sound like, actually, when we get to the end of there and the track kicks in? I think that works. I like that. That sound, by the way, that sound, um, that sound is, uh, like, I, I want to show you this. I really want to show you this. Um, in drum 80, does everyone have drum 80? I know I keep banging on about it, but I, I love this. This is just absolutely uh, my favorite drum app at the moment. So, uh, in drum 80 is basically it's drum synth right just like the the old simmons stuff was and if you um and so using these controls you can create your own um drum sounds uh we'll just go to this view so you see it a little bit bigger right and you have this percussion sound here and this really lends itself well to um Silly noises, glitchy sounds, you know, like, just like an effect sound. That's what you're hearing at the end of that bit there. Let me just zoom in. So this MIDI note here. If I just make this loop around here. Right, but the reason it's panning like that is because... I have another one of my favorite apps that I made a video about. Um, but it's not on that channel because we've got multibus out here. It is, let's just scoot along to the uh, percussion effect. Right, and now press this. There we go. No, wrong one. There we go. Right, true pap. Now, I made a, a video about this that I'm very proud of. Um, and all I've done is I've just put this on that channel, right? That bus that the percussion effect is on. And it's just constantly going round, um, just panning at like um, half a bar per... There's a revolution every half a bar, right? So when that so when that effect kicks in, it pans around like that. Now, uh, something else I'm going to mention is people like wide mixes. So people use widener apps to create wide mixes. Something I've discovered very recently, which I'm still digging into for myself, but it's working. I'm very happy with it. Wide mixes, right? And I thought this sounded like nonsense when I first heard about it. And I ignored this for the longest time. To create wide mixes, don't use widener apps. I do use Spatializer, but that's for a different reason, really. And it's only for certain things. But that is a fantastic app. Don't use widener apps. Right? What you want is, you want to pan everything, either center 
or hard left or hard right. If you want a wide mix, you need you need instruments panned in the center to create that that wide sound, right? So if you've got things panned from center, spread, you know, by all the different because because when you get a pan control, you can. Um, you can pan it by all, you know, tiny little degrees. I'm not explaining this very well. Now let's look at mixing desk, right? So, uh, so you go to your pan control, right? And as you see, right, you can there. Let's get the pop out big knob, right? So you can pan it all these different degrees. So what I always did was I tried to find a space for every instrument, so I'd have like the kick there, snare here, hat there, and then I'd have a ride over here, and a tom there, and a tom there, and a tom there, and spread everything out, and then I'd put all the guitars in between those spaces, and synth some bass in the middle, and so on and so on, try and find a space for everything, right? But since I've started experimenting with this, either put it in the center, or hard left, or hard right, Apart from the toms, because I love to hear that travel of the toms. But toms aren't playing all the time. That's how you create your wide sounding mix. And as I go along doing this, I'm going to show you this. And convince you. Because I am so, so happy with it. Yes, stereo wideners do cause, or can cause, a lot of problems. So, what was I doing before I started ranting on about that? Uh, I want that to be... Back to the center. Yes. Okay. Because that instrument is in the center because true pan is taking care of that random panning. There's nothing wrong with having like effects sounds, random panning, or toms traveling across. But things that are being played the majority of the time, the solid sounds in your mix, center, left or right. I promise you. By the time I get to the end of this track, I will have convinced you. Anyway. What have I got left? I've got a few minutes. So, I don't really have time to dig really particularly deeply into anything. I'm just going to talk about uh, what my intentions are from here. So, basically, I've done a stream. And, uh, and, it, and it said excellent connection all the way through. And now I've got a glitchy camera. I need to do something about that. And I've got a new camera view which is not the best quality view ever, but that's because um, it's I'm using DroidCam, and I haven't bought DroidCam. I'm using the free version, and you have to buy DroidCam to get the better quality, and I thought I'll use it first, right, before I buy it. So, um, yeah, don't abuse wideners, Matthias. I'm not saying they're never useful. I'm not saying that, but... A lot of people, I'm aware, throw wideners on a lot of things. And what happens with a lot of wideners, this is where Spatializer is a bit different. What happens with a lot of wideners is they take the sound from the center and they spread the sound, right, gradually. Is my camera working while I'm making these silly hand motions, right? So, so they spread the sound out. And what's happening is as it moves the sound wider like that it thins out what's in the middle with spatializer that content in the middle remains solid and adds wider sound um and it creates some fabulous it's not just a widener it's, it's a stunning i made a video about that so i'm not going to rant on it about, about it now if you're interested in spatializer that's the widener type of app to use hey ed you, you've you jumped in just before the end. I've got a couple of minutes left before I sign off so that Doug can do his thing. But it's awesome to have you here, nevertheless. So anyway, as I was saying, I've successfully done a stream. It's worked, and I'm stunned, I'm impressed, I'm happy, I'm surprised. Um, but I, I want to thank you all for for having a little bit of faith in me <laughs> and coming and checking it out. Um, especially Matthias. Because every single time, every single time I was trying to do a stream and it wouldn't work, he was there for me um, to be disappointed. I have no idea what's changed. I don't know why it's working now. But this means that throughout se September, I'm going to continue streaming, doing this song timber thing, progressing this track. And you know what? If I finish this track, 
like well into September, I'm, I'm, you know, I may, with plenty of time to spare, I may very well start another one. I'm also here to help you, right? So, um, so if you have a problem with your track, if there's something that you need to know how to do, if you get stuck, um, just shout up, right? All my information about how to contact me, whether you want to do it on social media, by email, by commenting below one of my videos, whatever. I'm available on everything. Just check out the information down there and get in touch with me. You are very welcome to do so. I have no issue with that whatsoever. I'm pretty busy, but I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can, and I will help you. Um, and as for my patrons, if you're if you if you're signed up for my Patreon account, then you can always ask me to play on your recording. If you need a bit of guitar putting down, if you need some bass guitar, if you need some help with your mix, um, if you want me to listen to something, you know, I provide that service there too. And don't forget, Leela, about the presets and, and everything that's available, the samples and stuff in the Patreon folder. All right, so I'm going to scoot off now. I'm looking at my project and I'm feeling like I didn't actually get tons done. Uh, but what I've done here is I've, I've set it up. And then from the next stream, can't tell you when that'll be exactly yet. I'll cover that in just a moment. Um, I will, you know, I'll be able to get like stuck right in and we'll get, we'll get lots of instrumentation down. We'll, we'll really progress this track. Um, I'm so happy that this worked um, and I'm so happy that you were here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as for when I will stream again, this next few days for me is quite complicated. I'm gigging tomorrow. I'm gigging on Sunday and then uh, the early part of this week both my daughter and my missus have birthdays and uh, yeah we didn't plan that out so well did we uh, but you know um, but yeah so we've got some birthday stuff going on um, but this next week I will be streaming um, I just can't say exactly when it'll be yet but I'll get it planned and I'll get it advertised all over spam the whole entire internet like I always do all right, so thank you ever so much for being here. Uh, love you all very, very much. So until my next stream, take care of yourselves and be good people. Make lots of music. Contact me if you need me and try not to piss pants about. I'll see you later.